Hi, this is Mubsy, and you are watching part two of my tutorial for beginners on tasking and Ocarina of Time. So, uh, in case you closed down anything from before, just open up MUHawk, aka BizHawk, back up. Uh, you should have the recent ROMs now that you can use instead of going to open ROMs. And we're going to make sure that we do Task Studio first. I'll show you what happens if you don't do Task Studio first. And now if I try to open, I'll get an error here and everything will just blow up basically. So make sure that you open up um, Task Studio first because it can and will blow up if you don't. And then usually you'll have to close things down even if the program's still open, it'll be pretty messed up. So make sure we open Task Studio first, that's a very important step right there. And then we can open up our virtual pad, RAM Watch, and Lua console as well. Perfect. Alrighty, so now that we've got everything back up and running here, the first step is going to be to uh, advance some frames here. So uh, we're just actually going to hit the pause or play button here, or we can just hit the what I made the period button on my keyboard. Um, and we're just going to advance until we get into the actual N64 logo and past here. Perfect. Alright, so sometime around now, um, there's the first time that we can press A to advance text. So I'm going to show you guys kind of how to farm for the, the first possible input. So the first thing I'm going to do is use follow cursor so that it's always got my, uh, wherever the cursor is on the screen. As you can see, if I like put it here and scroll away and advance the frame, it'll always snap to being on the screen. Makes it easy to... Uh, to see what you're doing and we're going to need recording mode on so that any of the inputs that we put in actually stick and I believe it's around 368 that we're looking for so I'm going to just oh, maybe it's 369 it's 370 at the latest perfect okay so as you can see 370 is the first actionable frame and because everything here is running at 20 FPS uh, one frame is actually three frames so you only need to have in the first input on the frame but I like to do things in threes just so I know what frame uh, I'm actually on if I'm on to the next actual frame or uh, if I'm just waiting and then I'm just clicking on the left hand side to advance some frames here and I know it's somewhere around 430 that I'm looking for. Okay, 430 worked. 429 worked. I'm gonna go, does 428 work? No. So what you can do is click and drag a larger area and then figure out the first frame that works and then just reduce it down to the necessary frame. So 428 through 430, they're all the same frame, but any one of those frames works here. Um, now we're in the main file select screen here, and this actually runs at 60 frames per second, so everything we do here is going to be a, the actual frame itself. Uh, there's no doubling or tripling up frames like you would do during the uh, the main game or it's 30 FPS during your inventory screen so um, the other thing to know that's very important is everything is delayed two frames visually now what that means is that in the menu screen here it's only going to be actually two frames that we have to go back but in the main game the where we actually are is actually six frames in, in BizHawk ahead of, uh, of the visuals. So it's very important to know that you're actually visually ahead two frames, whether that's two full um, frames at 20 FPS or 
just one frame at 60 FPS. So uh, we're going to find the right frame to hit A on here. So the first frame here, 569 here that we found, is the first frame that we saw anything on the button, which is the same frame that you can hit A on. So we're going to actually go back two frames and hit A uh, to do that. And that'll pull up the file and pull up file select. And now I believe it's this frame here that we can hit R to do our language select. So I'm going to hit go back two frames and hit R on that frame there. Now let's see if it works if we hit it earlier. No, it doesn't. So that way we know we, we have the right frame. Now the second one's a little bit more sketchy here, so I'm going to turn on Turbo C just to turn off the sound. Okay, so it looks like this frame and later work. This frame and later work, so I'm just adding our um, inputs before here. This is about the only time, the, well not the only time, but uh, you don't normally do a lot of your inputs in the test studio. Normally you'll be using Virtual Pad here, but all right, so we've uh, through trial and error, we found the first frame that we can hit our on to change language each time now, and we're just going to be naming this file I think one p because we're going to make a one pause all dungeons run for this here. So the next thing that we're going to do is wait until here, and now we need to figure out what the first frame we can hit up on is. And we'll see if this frame works. And no, it does not. And see if this frame works. Now, this is one of the times you can't really farm frames by clicking and dragging, because if I held up, I'll eventually get it to go up. But I won't know what the best the best option is. So we're just farming for the first frame here that the uh, The cursor moves. It's got to be soon. But still not yet. Sometimes it can be a little misleading how far, far away it is you have to go. It might also help if I was hitting up on the actual, the right spot. I thought that was uh, a little, a little wonky. And that's why a lot of the time I removed the D-pad buttons. But I haven't removed them from this since, uh, since it's a new installation yet. Alright, there we go. That's the first frame. And then we're going to go up one more frame. You need to separate one frame in between each of the frames here. And then we can hit A immediately, the frame after here. So we get the one. And then the next frame here, we need to go up and to the right. And then just a right input, and then an A one frame after that. Perfect. So now that and that should select. It's just any time you're going the same direction, you need to delay once in between. But um, everything is all good now here, and so we're going to move along to the beginning here and find the first actionable frame, which is this one. Go back two frames, hit A on the frame and find this frame here and go back two frames and hit A. Oops, we only need A once. Perfect. Alrighty, now I'm going to make sure that my text box script is running so that it will match all the opening cutscenes for us. And I'm going to just 
turn off follow cursor so that it performs a little faster. And uh, now we're going to just hit the play button and have it go along here. And we'll speed this up along here so that you guys don't have to watch the opening credits. And uh, we'll take this from Treehouse. Alrighty, so as you can see here, the uh, text box script is currently mashing the text for us. We don't have to do anything here. You could manu manually do it all, but there's no reason not to use the script. The only time you might want to turn it off is when you actually need to menu in an NPC, um, like buying from a shop, for example. Or talking to owls. Alright, so we're just about just about where we need to be. So I'm gonna get ready to unpause everything now. Or to repause everything now. Alright, I'm gonna pause it now. And we're going to run to the top of the thing, so we can just drag the joystick to the direction that we'd want to have it held normally. And I'm just holding the frame advance button right now. Oh, I'm dragged down below. Let's fix that. I don't know what I was thinking. So let's go up. It's important to remember that it's actually two frames ahead of where it is, so I'm actually right here. So I think I really want to kind of swap to more of a left, even though it doesn't look like it yet, about right here. And now I'm going to try rolling. And that looks to be a pretty good, pretty good roll right there. So we'll, we'll just keep that one there. Now I'm going to hit my play button to advance quicker. I'm getting a particularly um, low frame rate just because I'm also recording. But normally when I'm playing here you'll get around 60 FPS on a Midway computer. So it's just that it's taking a lot of extra resources for me to capture everything right now. But when you're going frame by frame, that doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we're going to start with learning out how to s learning how to side hop. Okay, so what we can start doing is all we need to do is turn left for this side hop right now. So all we're going to do is hold left over here and keep an eye on our ram watch angles here, um, and wait until we see them change. So as you can see the bottom one changed. That usually happens before the other two change. So the next frame here they all changed. So now that they we have the right angle we can re drop our, uh, our input, put in Z for one frame and then we're gonna side hop. This time it's gonna be down because we need to have the camera um, you know, the camera is currently facing sideways, so down is actually the direction we need to side hop. So we put that in, and as you can see, we start to side hop off of here. Um, and now all we're going to do is we can uh, release the A input after the uh, third one, and I'm going to switch to left. And so you can just jump back in time by clicking on here. You can go back about 100 frames or so. Um, and you can set that in your configure max undo levels as well. How far back you can go before it just starts replaying from the beginning. So uh, right now we're currently side hopping off of here and the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be keeping our eye on this speed value in our RAM watch and waiting for it to hit 7.5 which is the first frame you can side hop. So now that it's dropped down to 7.5 we're going to put in three frames worth of A there, just because it's at uh, 
20 frames per second, so that'll equal a full 60 FPS, and then just keep advancing frames. And every time that it hits 7.5, we're just going to hit A for those frames. If you don't get all three of them, that's fine. As you can see, I only got the second and third A frame there. It still works exactly identically. So if you're just trying to be speedy, you don't need to be super... Um, oh, uh, good. Never mind. You don't need to be super... Um, you don't need to be a perfectionist, basically. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I need I want to see where I'm going. So the easiest way to know exactly where my angle is is while I'm side hopping. So I'm going to release the keep, keep the direction I was side hopping in and advance frames until it'll get to 7.5 and then 0. And you'll see that two of the numbers will change there, but you'll need one more frame until they're all the same there. And uh, at that point then... When you see the second frame of zero, you can release the stick and hold Z, and that'll turn you. So as you can see, I'd be going that way. So I need to turn, I want to go towards those rocks. So now we're going to actually do an angle change here instead. So while we're hopping through the air, we need to turn forward and to the right a little. So we're going to try something about like this. And we're going to hold until we get to that same frame where the numbers all add up, or all are identical there. Release the stick and hold Z for one frame. So just Z in for that frame. If you have a few no a few numbers above, it's fine, as long as you don't know, go past the uh, dead, dead zone threshold. And then we're going to put in a side hop here. And then we're going to do the same thing we just did and check our angle. And we can tell that we need, we turned a little too much there. So now all we have to do is go back in time to where we changed angles. And make it a little bit less. So we'll try 47 instead of 58. And then we'll just advance through this and check where we are. And this is actually probably pretty good for what we need, but we'll go just a little less bit more. Alright, that's perfect. So that'll get us right to the rocks. So now, now, now that we've got an angle that's actually going to take us to where we need to take it to take us, we can just go back and keep side hopping all the way into where we get to where we need to go. And as you can see, I'm just tapping the A button down every time that it hits 7.5 for those three frames that it's up. Alright, so now I'm going to try to pick up the rock. I can see I didn't pick up the rock there, but I think maybe if I sidewalk for one frame first, he, uh, he will pick it up. And now, well, out of this here, we can try to get a good angle for back walking. So we're just going to be holding the angle that we want because we are in a position where it's not going to make link run or anything like that. And then just, just go until all the three move horizontal and analog are all the same. One frame of Z and no input. And then walk down. Okay, I'm not a big fan of this angle already. I'd actually like to be a little bit more to the left, so. Alright, 
now that I've gotten past all that stuff there, I'm going to actually curve this back lock by going to a value of 10 here just to make myself go a little bit more to the right. And this is kind of a weird spot here where you need to swap to regular back locking. Otherwise you get caught up just because of the camera being weird. So we're just going to switch to a normal back lock. Keep advancing frames until we get into the corner. And now I'm going to turn around and target the wall. So once I've gotten into the corner, which I can tell by looking at my coordinates, I can tell that this frame I'm almost in the corner because it only moves one unit after this one. So I'm going to release C or it's already released and just hold down until all three numbers are the same there and that I'm facing downwards. And then I'm going to release Z or all inputs for one frame and target. And what that does there is if you release C before targeting a wall, for one frame after the movement, then you'll always snap to that wall. You won't get a weird angle. Uh, otherwise, you will get a weird angle if you go on the first frame. So this is just snapping us to this wall here. And then I'm able to back walk out of there. And this is just the beginning for itemless escape here. And we'll cover the rest of uh, of this here in the next video, but this is I think a good place to stop. We've covered a few basics and a lot of the basics that you'll need for moving around in, in the overworld, so hopefully this helps and uh, we'll see you for episode 3. Take care.